So how exactly should drugs be rolled out internationally? Joining us, Professor uh, Fahim Yunus, Chief of Infectious Diseases at the University of Maryland, Upper Chesapeake. Thanks uh, very much, Dr. Yunus, for being with us. We're also joined by Malini Aisola, co-convener of the All India Drug Action Network. Um, Dr. Yunus, let me come to you first. How is uh, uh, an international vaccine rolled out? Is it okay for a vaccine to be rolled out without effectiveness data or efficacy data? I think let's have a discussion about the science. Vaccine is all about quality, safety, and trust. Those are the three things. It's not about innovation. It's not about price. All of those things come later. When you look at vaccines, first you have phase one trials, typically done on 10 or 12 subjects, then phase two trials, maybe 100, and then phase three trials. That will typically include 35, 25,000 people in both arms. Now, after that, you see how much disease happens in those who got the vaccine versus those who got just the placebo. Then you publish those results, then you get it scrutinized by scientific bodies, and then you go in front of regulatory bodies because you have to generate trust in the product. And understand, these are healthy people who are going to get the product. So safety is paramount, number one. After that is efficacy. In terms of safety, one in a million bad side effects are understandable, but there are certain side effects that are rare. Unless you test a vaccine in 100,000 people, you're not going to find a rare side effect in stage one or phase two trials. So that's the process. If you look at Pfizer and Moderna, they both made it very, very public. Average scientists, physicians like myself were able to read a 60-page document with all the statistics of their phase three trial before FDA gave them approval. That's the standard process. Now the worry, Vishnu, is you pay now or you pay later. What I mean by that, if you roll out a product that's not efficacious, Pfizer and Moderna both are about 95% effective. There's no vaccine that's gonna be 100%. That's mean, that means that once you give it to a million people, you still may have 50,000 out of a million people who still may develop the disease. We understand that our people, our patients expect that. For example, if that efficacy drops to 50%, then you'll have half a million people developing the disease potentially, even after getting the vaccine. That's going to destroy the trust on the level of quality. And on, on terms of safety, if you end up with four or five bad side effects in the first one month, then even when you bring out a more reputable product down the line, there are going to be issues. So I, I wouldn't call it right or wrong. I would just call it risky. Risky. Um, uh, Malini, what would potentially happen to those who get Covaxin first up in the next couple of weeks without the data being published, and then it later turns out that the drug isn't as effective as they'd hoped it would be? Uh, do these individuals then get a jab of another injection of another vaccine? Mm, uh, Vishnu, let me start by saying that it's very sad to see that we're moving from a situation where we were having vaccine races to now vaccine wars. And uh, today we've had an opportunity over the last uh, couple of days uh, to read the permission letters that were granted to, uh, in the case of both Bharat and Serum Institute. And it's really hard to identify how these permissions fall short of full licensure. Uh, so this is the point I want to make. When it comes to Bharat Biotech, the regulator has made up a terminology, which is uh, one uh, that says as of abundant, uh, as an abundant precaution in clinical trial mode. But we have absolutely no idea what that means. Uh, and I also watched Dr. Ella during the press conference, and it appears that Bharat Biotech tech is in fact fully prepared for a rollout at the very earliest. Uh, he mentioned that they have sent their batches to Kasoli as well for uh, testing. Uh, and Dr. Ella initially said it was going to be rollout in the form of an open label study where individuals would be monitored. But subsequently, when people started asking if uh, the compensation rules would apply here, as they would in a regular clinical trial, he backed away and he said that he would need to get clari clarity from the regulator. Now, in the permission letter, the regulator has asked Bharat Biotech to submit a protocol for this uh, for rollout. Uh, why would they have to do this unless this was some sort of a trial planned, like uh, maybe a phase four trial? But uh, it seems that neither the regulator nor the company is actually coming clean on what clinical trial mode means. 
Another thing that is curious about this permission is that the vaccine is indicated for use in 12 years and above. Mm -hmm. Now, none of the vaccines in any part of the world have been used, that, are, that have been approved, are being used in individuals that are aged that young. So the youngest is uh, age of 16 or 18 years, depending on the vaccine, although there are some pediatric trials in ongoing. Bharat's approval really seems to be based on the fact that in the phase two trial, it had enrolled 14 participants between the age of 12 to 18. So that's it. We have data uh, in a phase two trial on 14 uh, participants in that particular age group. And this seems to be the best guess because even in the phase three study that is currently ongoing, the inclusion criteria is only for uh, individuals aged 18 and above. Okay. So, uh, I, I mean, this is just to say that we have a lot of questions about even currently what are the specific legal provisions invoked in granting both of the approvals, at what point and uh, meeting what criteria will these approvals get converted into full marketing authorizations and failing what, uh, uh, you know, what, uh, what uh, points would would the regulator, sure. um, you know, potentially revoke these permissions? Okay, Malini, I'll come back to you. Let me go back to Dr. Yunus. One of the points which was mentioned by uh, Bharat Biotech today uh, was that Oxford AstraZeneca has been giving four grams of paracetamol for every subject. These are his words for every subject who was vaccinated. That means they're suppressing the adverse reaction by giving paracetamol, which he believes he will not need to do. Uh, is that is that the case that everybody who gets a jab gets paracetamol as well? And is is that not true that therefore you could potentially be suppressing an adverse event? So Vishnu, first of all, I don't have a dog in the fight. I don't understand uh, all the local politics. And I think vaccination should really not be about such questions or allegations. You know, we're all one people. One thing that the virus has taught us despite these borders and nationalism, in the end, we are one people, the virus doesn't discriminate. So my interest is with the humanity, with the lives of people living in India. Having said that, whether you give them paracetamol or not, what is important? We know exactly the data of AstraZeneca. We know exactly how many people received it. Yes, there were some, some little glitches about half dose, full dose. We know that they have increased the number of subjects. We know the science behind that vaccine. We know how many people have received it. And we know it has gone through a pretty rigorous process of approval in UK. Now, if there are, and by the way, I don't know if people are receiving paracetamol or not, but if they're suppressing a fever which was going to go away in two days anyway, I think that is explainable. The key point here is transparency. Nothing is going to be perfect. Nothing is going to be risk-free. I understand the government is going to be under enormous pressure to protect a billion people when there are talks of a more infectious, more transmissible mutant strain. I understand all those pressures. All I'm saying is for any country, not just India, if you are under those pressures, the best thing is to come out, talk to the people directly, tell them exactly why you're doing what you're doing. Right. Even if you're giving paracetamol, people will understand. Trust your people. Don't cut corners because then you'll have to pay later. Yeah. Dr. Yunus, just about the science of what uh, we've been told, uh, the Bharat Biotech vaccine uh, apparently works on, um, um, on injecting um, an inactivated virus into, um, into human beings, and therefore there is a sense that it would target much more than uh, the spike, the, the, the T cells, the, the protein spike cells, it would also target other aspects of the virus. Therefore in the context of the mutation which we are now talking about, this could hypothetically be more effective against the mutation. Would you care to comment uh, on the science behind this particular no, drug? There is no evidence. There is no evidence of any of that. Hypothesis is a good word, but you don't want to roll out a vaccine to millions of people under the word hypothesis. Everything can be a hypothesis in science. But as of today, there is no evidence. And this is exactly what I would caution. When we go out to people, we tell them exactly what we know, and we also tell them exactly what we don't know. We don't have to give them hypothesis. We don't have to give them hope. We have to give them a strategy. And I think there will be many more vaccines coming down the pike. By the end of 2020, you may have 10 vaccines approved all over the country, all over the world. You may have the vaccine prices coming down. You may have the World Health Organization increasing access to vaccine. 
So while we have a good strategy currently with masks, social distancing, avoiding crowds, and good mask communication, I would not shortcut any of that strategy. And at the end of the day, we don't have any data whether this vaccine is going to be more effective against a mutant or not. Malini, a final question to you. Um, are we uh, necessarily running down Bharat Biotech, given the history of the company, which has had a track record of producing quality vaccines? If you've got a company which says that, look, why are you not questioning Sputnik or questioning the Chinese vaccine, where also jabs were given, and now there is a sense that they are working. Uh, why are you questioning us when, in fact, we believe this is going to work? They've put their credibility out there on the table and are asking, why are people like us criticizing them uh, when, in fact, they have a track record? Well, Vishnu, I can only speak about my group, and uh, we have actually been quite critical even of the regulatory uh, emergency use uh, approval for Serum Institute. Uh, and, uh, you know, we have uh, been raising questions even in respect of that. For example, the restricted emergency use approval that was just granted uh, is said to be subject to various regulatory provisions, but we don't know what those are. Mm -hmm. And uh, also the dosing schedule has been left wide open. We have had issues even with the serum vaccine in India because not all of the data from the bridging study was submitted to the regulator, which uh, doesn't help us uh, understand how they were able to establish the, uh, the equivalence of the COVID shield with the AstraZeneca Oxford vaccine. Secondly, the efficacy data that were uh, considered from the trials in the UK and Brazil, um, we have no clarity on what data data were considered in India and which efficacy estimates were considered in granting the Indian approval. The efficacy obviously varies depending on the dosing regimen, on the interval of duration between doses uh, and, uh, you know, many other factors. So uh, we uh, we do, uh, we have been critical of and we ha are monitoring not just Bharat Biotech, but uh, all of the vaccine can candidates. Uh, I would like to, again, uh, you know, I would support what uh, uh, the other expert just said in terms of the fact that it does appear that there is a, a very good promising pipeline of vaccine candidates in India and there is actually no need for the regulator to be making um, you know these very hasty decisions without the backing of adequate evidence uh, because I feel like uh, there, there could be some very promising candidates around the corner that would have a uh, good, um, you know, uh, good profiles, possibly, both in terms of uh, efficacy, affordability, and also appropriateness for being uh, for a country like India. Okay. Um, I'd like to thank both of you for, for joining us. I know you, none of you wanted to uh, be a part of the, uh, the, the, the political sort of conversation which follows. Understandable. Uh, this should really be science, but it's become politics as well. I would like to tell our viewers that we did reach out to Bharat Biotech. I have done that personally uh, on three prior occasions as well um, and they have chosen not to come or comment on this program i'd like to thank uh, both of you for joining us we're going to move on now to the other aspect of what we are seeing uh, the congress versus the bjp the samajwadi party versus the bjp in vaccine nationalism and the politics over the release uh, joining us uh, now milindiora uh, joins us uh, for uh, as uh, also uh, Tuhin of uh, the B BJP. I'd like to thank both of you very much uh, for being with us, Tuhin Sinha and Milind Dura. Uh, Milind, let me come to you first. Was vaccine nationalism, um, is, isn't there a real danger to, to this? Uh, is that really necessary at a time when, you know, we're all affected by this and we need a cure? So, Vishnu, thank you for having me. Uh, I would request you to give me a little more time because I have to leave a little early after I make my initial comments. I was told the show was at 9 p.m. Um, all I would say is this. I would say that your introductory remarks that uh, there's politics over the, the vaccine, I think, is most unfortunate. I don't think that there should be politics over um, an issue like public health care. Firstly, you know, I'm, I'm glad that politicians are debating an issue like public health. I mean, normally we spend a lot of time or we waste a lot of time uh, debating irrelevant issues relating to religion and caste. So it's mm -hmm. good for a change if politicians across different political parties are having a constructive conversation on an issue around public health and especially pertaining to uh, a vaccine. Because today people are hopeful that 
the coronavirus pandemic could be a few months uh, away from being permanently behind us. Um, there are great innovations in the and R&D in the area of uh, vaccinations, of therapeutics. Um, all of us as Indians are proud that uh, Bharat Biotech has developed at an advanced stage, is already at an advanced stage, it's in phase three trials, uh, has developed an indigenous vaccine. It's not just manufacturing the vaccine in India, but it's a homegrown, indigenously developed vaccine. That's a matter of great pride for every Indian. And I think that all I would say is that it's unfortunate that certain political parties and politicians have made irresponsible statements in the last one or two days, uh, calling it a opposition vaccine or a BJP vaccine or a vaccine that belongs to a particular political party is extremely unfortunate. Um, it's not becoming of any political party, any political leader. But having said that, I think it's important for the um, scientific community and certainly what happens in society is reflected in politics. Uh, so for people to ask the government certain questions, uh, while we are all proud that Bharat Biotech is India's only, uh, or let me say it's the first homegrown indigenously developed vaccine. Yeah. Um, I do think that there are questions that have been raised, uh, important questions from the scientific community who are not in this for politics. They don't really care about my party or the BJP for that matter. But I've asked why and how a vaccine has moved so quickly, wherein while phase three, phase two and phase three trials are currently being, being conducted, okay. and they may be a few months away from being completed, that it's received emergency use. So I think the limited point that I would make is that it's important for governments and regulators, and I would credit this government uh, at the center, state governments as well, for doing a very good job in combating COVID. I think okay. that uh, we've increased mask usage. We're not right. a country where so, Milan, we're just, denying I, using masks. Right, we're not a country which has anti-vaxxers. And I just want to bring take that across to Tuhin Sina of the BJP. Tuhin, I don't think anybody is criticizing Bharat Biotech uh, at all. I think we're all immensely proud of the fact that this is a stand-out company. And we are proud as Indians that we have companies like this. The question is of regulation and why should this have been released now when it could have been released three months later when the data was available? Well, Vishnu, the permission given to both uh, Oxford, AstraZeneca and uh, Covaxin is for restricted usage in emergency situations in public interest. Now, the words are so specific and clear that if you look at the phase three trials of, uh, of Covaxin, some 26,000, an unprecedented number of 26,000 people, volunteers are being recruited for that, or out of it, 23,000 are all have already been recruited. And I think 50% of them have been undergoing these trials for the last many weeks. So if you look at it, if in the last 50 days, none of them have reported any adverse symptom, I think by, by, by that uh, logic itself, the restricted usage in emergency situations in public interest is already happening. Now, I can assure you that by the time the, the, the absolute data for, for the phase three is available in March, we will not be regularizing its use prior to that. But in an emergency situation, considering that apart from all the efforts that the government has put in, I think India has also been a little lucky to combat it on a day when when UK reports 50,000 new cases for a, for a country of India's size to report just 16,000 or 17,000 is a huge achievement. And we don't want this, this advantage to slip out of our hands. So in this situation, I don't see any harm in, in uh, you know, giving a restrictive approval to, to okay. Covaxin. Milin, does, does that not make sense that it's restricted use only, right? As, and it's as safe. I said, and, as and I said look, as I said, uh, regardless of what a political person says, uh, I saw the statements by the ICMR head, because mind you, Covaxin is a vaccine jointly developed with ICMR. Yes. Um, as long as the regulators, the government assure the citizens about this process, the fact that if it doesn't pass phase three approvals, obviously it won't reach out go out to the public, to the public at large. I think these are positive steps. That's all that people are asking for. People are only asking that the government should come clean, educate the public about this and end any misconceptions. Because the more misconceptions you have, uh, the more it becomes open to politicization, mm. which will be the most unfortunate thing we can do around a vaccine. Which is why I said to another news channel earlier in the day that I personally am very proud that we have created a homegrown vaccine 
I congratulated the government for encouraging the private sector working in tandem with the scientific community, with regulators, with institutions like the ICMR, which I have worked with as a union minister in the past. Uh, great people, great scientists, uh, great medical professionals who run it. And that's a good thing. That's all I asked for. And that's all that, okay. the, that, that the opposition is asking for is that please explain to the public that you have thought this process through. It's not being done in haste. And then I'm sure that once phase three trials are completed, it could be two, three months from now. At that point, it would probably receive approval to be to for the general public at large to be vaccinated. And at that point, who would not want to take a homegrown and indigenously developed vaccine? Right. I mean, all of us would queue up to do that. Absolutely. So there's no, there's no discussion, there's no debate of politics or differences of opinions here. I think it's a constructive discussion. Maybe some politicians from different parties have made irresponsible statements. That's not something that my party represents. It's certainly not something that um, a, a view that I represent. All right. I think at a constructive level, we want a discussion. We want people's fears, concerns to be assuaged so that people can go forward once this vaccination process begins in the right earnest in with full confidence and can get vaccinated and come back to normal as quickly as possible. Thank you. Tohin, uh, last word to you. Um, the process of transparency, isn't that what this is all Ooh. about? Should the regulator not actually have taken questions when you're releasing two drugs? Uh, is, is that not something which has triggered this battle, this war of words now? I, it's unfortunate. Should there not have been more transparency, more explanation, more uh, revelation See, of data, uh, public data uh, on, on whether it's serum or this? I, what's wrong with that, right? See, the vaccine approvals across the world at this point of time, whether it is Moderna or whether um, it is uh, Pfizer, they've all taken place in unconventional situations. We haven't followed the process of five years. So, yes, I mean, all the queries which, which uh, people have, that will be addressed. But yesterday, when Shashi Tharoor, uh, you know, made that tweet, that tweet has a very had a very clear accusatory nature that had malified the interest. He accused the, 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 the COVID shield of not meeting the data. Mm -hmm. Now, like I pointed out, if, if you just compare the, the, the phase three, the number of volunteers who were part of uh, AstraZeneca trial in India, which is mere 1,700, and if you compare it with 26,000 people, I think that by itself, the very fact that, that not a single of the 26,000 recipients of the phase three trials have reported any negative uh, symptom or any ne negative effect, that is a huge reassurance. So I think you need to trust the government a little more. Yes, I mean, we are ready to answer all the questions, but probably I think the government did not anticipate the immediate accusatory nature of, uh, of uh, you know, some of the tweets which politicians like Akhilesh and what politicians like Sh Shashi Tharoor made. All of them, mm -hmm. unfortunately, are not as sorted as sensible as uh, Milind may sound. All right. I'd like to thank you, Tohin, very much. Uh, Milind's left us. Uh, I'd like to thank you very much for being with us. I, I think it's important that we keep this conversation alive at the level of science. Uh, and regulation, even if the if the spokespeople are po political leaders, because this is all about science and healthcare at the end of the day. Run out of time. Thanks very much for being with us. Goodbye.